Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 2 of our Feed the Beast Neotech series. Today guys, I wanted to jump right into the tech aspect of it, but I also kind of wanted to start building a starter house. However, I kind of ran out of resources and realized I was failing at copying the design I saw on Google massively and started taking my own approach and well, we have a half-built starter house here. I will throw the image up on screen right now as to what I saw on Google while scrolling. And yeah, I don't think I accurately got whatever I was trying to copy. I went too wide on the building, didn't even use the right resources. However, there is a Yellowstone biome from Terralith, just like, I don't know, way, way down there while I was exploring. And it has plenty of calcite and spruce wood. And I thought, well, those are close enough. There was dark oak over there too, but I didn't use it. So yeah, we kind of failed at reproducing the building, but you know. I think it looks pretty good. Well, kind of good. We'll finish it later. I also do want either mahogany or maybe packed mud bricks for the roof innards instead of using deep slate. Deep slate's not hard to get by any means. I'm just not a big fan of it. I'll probably do a chimney like he has on this side, on that side. I don't know. But this is something we will work on on and off camera a bit. Not too worried about the starter house itself. However, I did get myself a base floor in here just to start with our machines, get our steam machines in here. And we also have a room for a basement with a curb stairwell probably down here. And it'll probably do more machinery expanse down there and then storage and a bed up top on the main floor once we get to it. However, I did want to jump right into the technological aspect of FTB Neotech and not worry so much about the building. So this will be a secondary thing. I might include some time lapses on camera. I don't know. But for now, we're probably going to do most building off camera and then come back for the technical aspect only just so we don't bog down this pack with too much randomness you know feel me cool so let's just jump right into the pack and see what we have in store for today and hopefully that creeper doesn't blow me up Alrighty. so i've gone ahead and moved everything from our old base just over here moved all the storage upstairs up here however this storage currently if we continue down this path it is just going to evolve into a wall of chests and a wall of chests and until we get to implied logistics that is not going to do so i'm going to use the sophisticated storage probably use the barrels i do like the look of barrels over chests so we're going to go ahead and upgrade them and we need iron upgrades and i think we get away with this simply put iron upgrades are just torches iron plates and you also need copper ones so copper plates and iron very simple i don't believe i have nearly enough gold to go to the gold upgrades but i think iron upgrades should be fine for now and we can also get ourselves some stack upgrades i believe so yeah if we grab these stack upgrades it's just logs and then we need some copper plates and copper so we need a lot of copper but we can go ahead and get some stack plates down and actually maybe even get iron plates i don't know how much iron i have but i don't think it's going to be nearly enough yeah we only have 57 so we'll probably end up having to do a bit of mining today as well to get through it all i also want to do the faster coke oven as well as the faster blast furnace this will allow us to get into the steel age however there's a few more things we need to do before we start producing steel at a fast rate so the coke oven is definitely one of the first things i want because you do need a lot of cold coke to make steel i've been i found out but that all leads back to us needing a water pump because i can't keep manually filling our boiler down here by doing this because well i might forget one time and then we'll run out of water and we'll run out of steam and then none of our machines will work so first thing i want to do is actually get this guy hooked up to a water pump so that guy requires two copper gears two rotors a tank machine casing and some fluid pipes And that should be everything for the bronze water pump. Bang. It is. As you see, I've connected these guys up just under here with my steam pipes. However, I can run, or I should be able to run, another fluid pipe in here. Maybe. Can I dye them? How would I go about dyeing them? Oh, you need the mixer to dye them. All right. Well, we'll make ourselves a mixer so this actually looks nicer. And this guy should be working. Yep, he's full of steam. So we'll make some more fluid pipes. I didn't mean to do all eight. Unfortunate. Okay, let's see. Can I? Oh, I can. This is great. Okay. I do like this, I will say. So we can do water right here. 
Oh, you do need steam to make water. Okay, well, that's pretty easy. We do have the steam pipe right above it. There we go. I mean, it makes sense, you do. But yeah, that should make water, and it should be enough water that it's sustainable. I can't imagine it wouldn't be, but we'll go ahead and cover all this up. Now, the next thing we have to do here is with our mixer is make some Primal Gel Goo, which is a Just Dire Things, which is Direwolf's new mod. I've never actually played with it before. However, this will supposedly convert an iron block into ferrocore crystals, and then we can mine those to make compressed iron, which is needed to make something. Or you, oh no, okay, so compressed iron doesn't have anything to do. I was just looking at the arrows run. This is just how you get a ferrocore, or you just get compressed iron in this pack. It is through ferrocore ingots. This has nothing to do with our steel production, so I don't really need to worry about this. However, I do want to explore this right now, and it will happen slowly in the background, so I do want to get this started right away. So to make some primal gel goo, we need a bucket of water, two clay, or four clay, two sugar, two run flesh, and a dirt. I will get this started immediately, and then we can work back on getting a storage system going. So yeah, that will happen. And it gives us the block of iron, so that'd be nice. So we'll accept that. And if I just place this right down, as far as I know, you just place it beside one another. And yeah, you can already see it starting. It is starting to corrupt the iron block. While I've been setting up our sophisticated storage, I just changed this over to do iron specifically so we can make iron upgrades on our barrels up here, which I have one upgraded to copper so far. While I've been doing that, our ferric core is actually finished. So if I come over here and mine this, should be as simple as that. And then we get raw ferric core, which we simply just smell. There is no doubling for this guy here. So I'll come back to you guys once I have all of our storage upgraded. And then we can continue on and hopefully get ourselves some better machines. And if we come down to the basement i've dug out a pretty decently large space here and that's because well, i want to expand for the future and also make enough room this guy right here the steam mining drill is actually one of the quests and you can read through it if you'd like there's a bunch of stuff i have to claim still just from what i've all done however it mines a one by three by three area and it has automatic silk touch now the silk touch you can remove by shift right clicking so enable disabled what's really cool about this thing hold shift just like any of the apotheosis tools that automatically mine five by three or whatever it is if you hold shift it will break the block normally some things i went ahead and did is i made two more bronze boilers that is just so we have enough steam just before we get into the steel age down here and then we can upgrade them to steel compressors wherever that is steam boilers right here so we can make steel boilers eventually however i think this will suit us much better they are very cheap to make what i want to do now is actually make a better coke oven as well as a better blast furnace the blast furnace will allow us to start making steel which is super useful this is very simple to make all you need is a steam blast furnace fire clay bricks which we've made previously and then item input and fluid input hatches. So I've actually gone ahead and just marked all these town already. The steam blast furnace is just a blast furnace surrounded by fire clay bricks. The item input bronze output hatches are just same as Greg Tech. It is a bronze machine case and then a hopper on top or on the bottom. And then this is just a bronze tank for the fluid input. And you can switch it to a fluid output hatch or vice versa just by putting in a craft table in case you make the wrong one. Coke oven, bricks, and a furnace, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and get those, uh, everything gathered up for those. And then we'll place these bad guys right behind us. and. And hopefully get a lot faster production going on with all of our steam here. All right, I can just go ahead and tear this guy down now. And always make sure while you're tearing down immersive engineering blocks with anything that can vein mine or mine multiple blocks at a time, you're always making sure you are not using the vein mine ability while the machine is constructed. This guy here I will collect because you do need the output and input hatches for this guy to work. So we'll do fluid input on the bottom, we'll do fluid output here, item input here, and item output there, and then we'll fill that in. Pretty simple. Once again, I've never used this mod before, but it actually is nice that it does tell you, for example, exactly where on the structure you can place them, and it does seem to to recognize that you're trying to place it on this structure specifically so that's nice however that is our coke oven done so i will need some fluid pipes to bring over the fluid and i believe i should be able to just stick this if it's anything like great tech i should be able to just stick that right on there and do auto eject enabled and it should go right into the tank however that tank there is actually full so that's quite unfortunate the item input i will just throw a item auto pull disabled so we'll do auto pull enabled we'll do auto eject enabled and we'll do auto pull disabled doesn't actually matter i just want to pull over the steam into here 
So if we go ahead and connect this down back this way, and that's perfect, we'll just connect this guy, connect him there, and that is getting steam input, chest, and chest. So this is my output, so I'm just going to throw a coal coke in there for now. So we'll throw the coal in there, it'll automatically be pulled in, and slowly but surely it'll progress. And if you can tell, that is so much faster than its counterpart, which is super nice. So our coke oven is now fully functional. I probably could have moved it over and made this a lot cleaner or done items on one side and things on the other. However, for now, this is just our small setup. It's very temporary until we get a large factory, but we're not doing a factory with steam age machines by any means. Also, I've been doing searching throughout this mod pack and the pack in general just to look at modern industrialization because I'm used to great tech. So I wanted to figure out how things worked and how tiers worked. However, it seems, to my knowledge, you only ever need one electric macerator. You don't need uh, LV, MV, HV, UV, LV, LUV, M like, you know what? You don't need every single tier of macerator or every single tier of compressor, mixer, fluid. You know what? Like, it's actually like you just make one electric macerator. The only HV things we have in this pack are transformers and energy hatches, meaning the energy hatch for, say, a turbine or a... EVF like electric blast furnace or a vacuum freezer you just need to throw the hatch on which is great tech but there's no additional machines for that tier so I'm not entirely sure how the upgrades work for them or if you just supply it with higher power and it works faster or if it'll blow up or not so I might want to figure that out before I go ahead and start messing around with stuff so we went ahead and crafted our steam blast furnace got a bunch of fire clay bricks mounted up or probably end up going to make two of these machines in the future anyways so it's not too big of a deal I'm just trying to think where exactly I want them in my base. I think maybe just behind here will work because if you actually open this up, I didn't even realize and it was right in front of my face the entire time. You can hold G to see how big or what the exact machine looks like. This guy here is a hollow clay brick statue, four by three by three, and it's steam blast furnace in the second to middle block. And well, you can put the item input, out of my input, and fluid input hatches wherever you please. However, I do want it close enough to my steam piping that it's not too absurd, but I think over here would actually work pretty nicely. I was looking at a few more things in modern industrialization just to get a feel or like an understanding better for the pack as I make my series to help you guys and help myself learn at the same time. While reading, I realized you can actually camouflage all the pipes and such with the color palette thing you get from one of the quests. If I look it up here, you get the pipe configurator here. And just reading through this pipe configurator, there's actually a lot of things you can do with them, which is super cool. The one thing we've already gone ahead and done was dye them with our mixer, which we did earlier. However, you can also do a lot more things with them, such as camouflage them and hide them immediately just with any block and you can also copy that to many other pipes at the same time super super useful so we'll do item input i don't you know what um, we'll figure it out later it can always be moved around that's why i like about these machines is there's no set in stone placement you need so item input like so and our blast furnace is working so if i go ahead and throw my uncooked steel dust into here this guy should work and if i read this correctly if you hold shift on this it says use gunpowder two times this machine i assume you just right click it on and it does work at two times the speed but i probably should have read how much it was using per tick but i'm pretty sure it doesn't actually speed up the rf usage or the eu usage sorry and i believe it should stack considering so it, this should be we're active 4800 tickets ticks actually and it completed the quest without even being in an inventory that's unique cool so we are officially in this steel age now what I want to do while we're in the steel age is get a steam quarry immediately. This is probably the most, though the most important part of I think this entire chapter. Obviously, getting to electron, like the electric age, is very important. Don't get me wrong, and doing all your rubber and all that. However, the quarry itself is probably the most important thing, and this guy shouldn't be too hard to make. It requires some invar, which we can make with a alloy kiln, probably. No, we can't. Okay, so we have to use invar dust. Which which is iron and nickel dust. So we'll just macerate 
upgrade some nickel and iron, which we already have plenty of, so that's not an issue. And then steel pipe and just a bunch of steel. So it's literally all just steel and a bit of invar, which is just more iron and then mixed with nickel instead. And what else do we need? An item pipe and some diamond dust, which we already have diamond dust as well. So I want to just make ourselves a bunch of bunch of steel, like as much steel as possible, and hopefully get a steel quarry going immediately because this guy will be our savior. And it also gives us six bronze drills or eight bronze drills, sorry, because it has a low chance to consume the drill. And basically, I assume there's an inventory slot while you open it or the item input hatch, you put the drills in, I assume. And then the output hatch obviously gives you your ores and hopefully different drills and tiers yield different ores. So check with the uses to the best targets ores you want the most. Oh, interesting. Okay. So if we look up drill, oh wow, there's a lot of them. So titanium drill will give us uranium, iridium, and fluorite. A steel drill will give us pretty much every ore in the game other than like iron and copper. The bronze drill is probably what we want. Yeah, it's going to give us copper, iron, coal. Those are the main things we want right now. Copper, iron, and coal. It can also give us some... No, a copper drill is not what we want. We don't want any uh, ores. The gold drill, I assume this is specifically works in the nether only because I can't imagine this is going to give you this stuff in the overworld. But I might be wrong. Maybe it doesn't actually drill the area around you. Maybe it's like the void miner from whatchamacallit. Um, it, the mod name has changed so many times at this point, I can't even think. But yeah, this is actually cool. So yeah, we definitely want to make bronze drills and how hard are these to make? Bronze drill head, iron gears, bronze drill head is just plates, curved plates, rods, bolts, and gears. Cool. Okay, so I'll definitely make a bunch of these. Well, and it gives you four per, so that's actually really nice. And the industrialist villager does trade you interesting how do you get an industrialist villager i wonder hmm i wonder what tool or what uh thing you have to give it because i was making lecterns earlier for the outside of our base and this does tell you oh it maybe doesn't oh it does okay so yeah it does tell you that's the profession so i wonder if there's something specifically modern industrialization that gives you the modern industrialization villager because we, uh villager mod is in here right uh yeah easy villages is in here so if we can actually do what we did on Feed the Beast Guys and make some traders and, you know, pick them up and keep them in our trading base because these uh, auto traders require netherite ingots, but might be something useful that we want to do and set up an emerald farm with maybe like a sugarcane farm or paper, like to sugarcane to paper, paper to emeralds, emeralds to whatever the uh, modern industrialization farms can give us. Just because I want to change it up a bit. Obviously, I do love my tech and having everything passive if you guys have seen our Skies series. I love having passive automation for everything that's possible in the game. So that is what we will be doing here. However, there is a lot of progress through before we even get close to that. But to keep it short and simple, I want to get towards the quarry. So I'm going to go ahead and go mining for a lot of iron because like I said, I have a long cave down here. However, I did run into a water cave, which is the most unfortunate thing possible. So I had to divert down that way. However, I'm going to go mine for a bunch of iron. So, see you in a second. We'll be right back. As someone who apparently just hates accepting quest rewards, I should be looking at accepting quest rewards because here, if you actually click on the steel ingot quest, you get 64 free steel ingots for completing the quest. So that does help out a lot. However, I did go mining just down here for iron at Y level 16. And if you were worried about or were concerned that your item pipes in your world might not be working, it is a very simple fix. Even if you do have extract on one and input on another, you just have to right click them with an empty hand. However, problem with these guys is you have to just click them to whitelist mode or blacklist mode, sorry, and then they will work. So normally they are both set like this on whitelist. Just right click on them with an empty hand and you will get blacklist mode. All right, I think I have everything I need. To make these, I'm not entirely sure. I do need two more steel curved plates, so I'll do that. And that is simply this. There, there we go. We'll grab two more steel curved plates. I went ahead and made a bunch of invar, just simply alloyed this. Here we go. I'll just show you. Invar is mixing iron dust and nickel dust and then smelting it. I will show the setup once we go back downstairs, but it's pretty standard. But we have six machine piping casings. So that's that. We need 10 steel casings, regular ones. So I need 10 of these.
while crafting up everything for the steel quarry here, I realized you can't actually make invar gears and plates and stuff in your forge hammer. You actually need the compressor and you need the cutter cutting machine here and you need lubricant for that. So I was like, oh, now I have to make crease oil and redstone, which isn't bad at all. This is actually a really easy recipe. You get 500 per 500 with one redstone. Not a big deal. However, you do get a bottle of lubricant or bucket of lubricant for doing this. So I, you know, reading quest, very useful. However, we also do need a compressor, which I didn't make. However, you do get a free compressor or a free bronze machine hull for making the fluid mixer. So I'm going to take advantage of that and go make myself a compressor as well make another forge hammer and then we could stick these guys right here as well on top however i did want to make eight dyed right red item pipes because this guy is filling up with a copper dust and i do need to actually move the copper dust into the back of our furnace here so i'm going to do something like this and these pipes definitely connect very bizarre I, i'm not sure how much i like that but i mean it's not too big of a deal however i do want to just grab through the back of here do an export and we will use the whitelist feature this time to make it however i can't actually access the back of this guy there we go i'm gonna break that and that is set to insert however i don't really care about the whitelist on that side i just want to whitelist dust dust oxide does that smell directly into aluminum i don't think it will right yeah you need to ebf it okay so we'll leave the lead so we'll do copper lead we'll do brick dust we don't actually care about tin dust is useful so we'll do that 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 and those should automatically be pumped into our furnace now perfect and then those will just get put in this bottom chest down here because yeah currently our master can't actually put its contents anywhere and then we'll set the gold dust and such later however i can move the ingots down here for now so by all accounts i should actually have everything now and the invar rain craft it like so and then we can craft the invar gear you know what we'll make two of them just because we can and we can make an invar rotary blade i don't want to make two of those just because we don't need two cores and then i can make two steel arch plates no i can't i need more steel for that let's convert 32 of it for now we'll see if we need more in a second however we need two more steel arch plates so we'll craft two of those and we can make our steam quarry so with all that the quest is now complete and once again reading quests is important not so much the text but the rewards because it gives us an input hatch and output hatch as well as an input hatch for fluid and it also gives us some more steel machine casings which i assume is necessary for the build itself but we will see in just a second however once again looking at this thing it is a three by three by five so i do want enough room for it and i do want to have my another furnace right here so actually right here in this wall will work perfect and then we'll go up two. So we'll do item quarry here. And then I do need access this way for steam. And once again, I will use the steam configurator or whatever it was called to bring the steam this way. Or sorry, not the steam configurator, the pipe configurator to block the input. However, I'm going to have to do this manually for each pipe just because the steam isn't connected or since there's a fluid in the pipe you actually have to just connect them manually like this which isn't too big of a deal and this actually does show you the entire layout which is something greg tech doesn't do there are add-ons to greg tech to do it i believe however the base version of greg tech does not so that is actually a nice change i will admit so we should be able to just stick the pipe back here why can't i connect it it's probably because there's no connection so we'll do the fluid input hatch this way and then we can connect it like so. And if we look at this guy, wait, why isn't it showing anymore? Oh, you have to hold the wrench. There we go. We can just hold it in our offhand. That's really useful. So we'll do machine casings like this, like so. And we do need a input hatch and an output hatch. So we'll do item input, item output, probably just on the bottom here. Very simple because yeah, we want this guy filled. So we'll do input, output, and then we'll do chain, chain, chain. And then mesh pipe casing all the way up from top and around and except right there. That is our steam quarry active and valid. So if I just throw these in here, it should start working immediately. Perfect. And if we throw a chest on here with autumn auto export on, 
which I don't have a chest on me, but I will go get one. So I will use this guy, which we can just upgrade in the future with the stack upgrade. We're only going to get a certain amount of ores anyway, so we don't need the space. We just need the upgrade itself. And look at that. It's already working. It's got us coal and iron. And from what I read, this guy just generates it similar to the laser mining drill. So biomes don't aren't important. It is just the drill itself. So as long as you have a drill of some sort in here, it will just mine what that drill can mine. So like I said, the gold drills will actually mine nether ores in the overworld as far as I can tell. I might be incorrect on that, but from what I read on the mod, that should be how that works. Look at that, we just got tin and another piece of coal. So I'm going to wrap up this episode here. It was a bit more of a lengthy one, but we did get our first steam machine, or sorry, our first steel machine made in the background. We have a new steam furnace in the background, a new steam coke oven, and we also have a few more steam machines over there as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. In the next episode, we will hopefully move on to the electronic LV age, see if we can do that pretty fast. It just requires a bit of rubber and a bit of tin as far as I can tell, but I might be mistaken on that part. However, I will continue cooking up steel in the background. I will continue mining ores, not breaking torches, and see what we can get prepared for next episode. So if you guys enjoy the episode, leave a like on the video. It means a lot. If you guys learned something or would like to show me something or teach me something I missed, leave it in the comments below. I will read them all. And if you don't want to miss any future uploads or any other future series, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.